With law enforcement, we are the ones that document a lot of the incidents, especially criminal in nature. Uh, but when we start digging down into it, we can uh, give an intel to the team about all the parties involved and backgrounds and stuff like that, which helps you see the big picture, not just that one glimpse of the moment, but you get to see a good portion of that person's life or the people involved around them. We have a responsibility to bring as much information to the table for everyone so that everyone has the same information we have and therefore we can make that picture clearer for everybody of how this may have happened who's involved and how we can, uh, you know, if, especially with our suspects, if we have some kind of past knowledge of, you know, this individual, uh, whether it's address, cars, information on them, it's just, it's such huge. It's something that a social worker would not get right off the bat. Having the benefit of having everyone there at an EMDT, uh, we get answers right away. It's a huge advantage for me of, of having their resources, their knowledge, the wealth of knowledge available at my fingertips, and the same goes for me for them, but they provide so much more on the backside of the case, and especially any kind of uh, information that we can glean from DSS, you know, whether it's past financial fraud or anything like that, we, it's, it's, such, it's such a relief to have that cooperation. It's incredible how quickly you can uh, come up with a solution to the problem and, and stop it maybe from escalating, stop the person from getting hurt further. Um, everyone comes together immediately and helps that person immediately and uh, helps them start formulating a plan to move forward. So we can give you our advice to the EMDT teams about how to go about the investigation um, and, and it, it comes out with a positive outcome most of the time. I love watching from beginning to end and seeing it where I normally, it's I get there and it's non-criminal and I leave. This way we're part of the team so we get to do the investigation, help uh, give advice with the investigation and watch it through. We're triaging the situation and we're not uh, always gonna have something that's prosecutable, but at least all of the resources there that are providing some kind of program to our individual that we're trying to assist, uh, they're aware immediately and we're able to make phone calls to other agencies and get them aware of the situation that this person is being taken advantage of. So seeing that for the first time and being able to do all that, like steer the, steer the project towards uh, you know, a goal is something that we do almost every single meeting. And what's also nice is when we go and start looking into the financial exploitation, we're aware of all the rest. The financial part is just a small part of that person's entire life. And uh, we see what everyone else, um, the social workers, the psychologists are looking for. And we go out and we, I dig a little deeper than just the, the criminal aspects of it. I see what else is it there that we can get other agencies to help the person. One of the things that I, I can't stress enough for uh, the group is uh, involvement by the financial institutions in the area of you know, your uh, forensic investigation units or your asset protection units uh, in those financial institutions have to be involved. I'm making phone calls to them. You know, a good portion of every single case is notifying whatever bank about what may be happening and that uh, we, need to, we need to put a watch on this account and either uh, we're putting stops on checks or transactions or whatever it may be. They're a huge role in this, you know, as so we talk about the law enforcement aspect and the social work and whatnot. I, it just they're a key player in all of this that you, know, you have to have that good working relationship with the institutions in your jurisdiction to uh, have them on board to assist you. Yes, it's ideally having them on the team. They just give you the information right away, yep. as opposed to you having the subpoena and it comes back three months later. Um, then you have to manually go through it. They can look at an account really quick and say, yes, there's exploitation. Then you write the subpoena, but you, you've, you've got the information on hand right away. What's nice with the EMDT boards is we're able to uh, get the resources for like forensic accountants, uh, which helps us dig through months of paperwork. This person, this could be going back five, six, ten years um, in their uh, in their history, and that would take a, an officer or an investigator who's not familiar with accounting. It would take them a long period of time where um, the EMDT team is able to provide a forensic accountant, which puts it all down into like one paragraph, um, and they would come in and testify for you as well. That is a huge leverage, though, when it comes down to it if you're putting that financial uh, analysis in front of 
you know, you would be defendant or suspect, uh, that's leverage on them in the prosecution aspect of it, of here's the proof, here's what you did. We need to come to some kind of agreement versus you going to trial. And, you know, that's a huge lever that we can use to our advantage in any kind of interrogation. With law enforcement, I think it's our responsibility to build relationships between departments, uh, whether it's law enforcement agencies or social services or whatever other you know, financial institutions. If you don't have those relationships, you're not doing your job as an investigator outside of the MDT. So you're bringing to the table what you should be, you should be having all of your resources available to you at any time. And uh, that just goes for any, from my opinion, any kind of law enforcement agent that's doing a job properly. Uh, you should have those in your back pocket to be able to reach out to somebody and get what you need and you know, therefore you're doing a better job when you're going to EMDT. And many times we're the first ones coming in contact. The social workers haven't come in contact with this person yet. We're the first ones coming in contact. So having this knowledge, being part of the team or the members of your department, knowing you're part of this team, they can give you a quick call and say, listen, this person needs more services and I can provide. They need it quickly, not just here's a report. Maybe we'll forward it to somebody eventually, get to somebody's desk. They can send us an email. They can send us a phone call. We can get a, started with the teams right away so they can be um, and acted upon right away. They understand uh, when we make the phone call to them, it isn't frivolous. It isn't, it isn't something that, oh, we'll get to it kind of thing. It's, hey, I need you out here because you're gonna end up with this, so why wouldn't you come out right now and you know, we'll, try to, we'll try to tackle this together. And that's what we do. You know, and having that working relationship with, with the other agencies, you're so far ahead of the curve when it comes to helping people in your community, in your jurisdiction. And uh, I, like, I like that now we're able to do this on a daily basis. You know, like I can't imagine going back to the antiquated ways that it was. The communication between agencies has improved so much. If you're not operating this way, you're doing a disservice to what you could for the public. You know, you, you're providing so much better, well-rounded service to your community this way and why not make it you know, uh, a standard for your county? It makes you feel better about yourself. It makes you feel like all these years of uh, you know, spending Christmas uh, at work and New Year's and away from your family, that it's all meant something to people in the community. And, and it makes you feel as if you've had these accomplishments um, in, your, in your career um, that you chose to help people, and uh, you never knew really how much you were helping them until you sat on one of these boards. So again, why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you do something that's this simple and is fulfilling to many people, not just yourself? Uh, it's well worth the time. It's well worth the, uh, the group collaboration. We're achieving something. It isn't, it isn't a pointless meeting where nothing gets accomplished. I feel that we certainly have huge successes and uh, we, we wouldn't be able to do that if we didn't all work together the way that we do. So if it isn't you know, available in a county, uh, whatever agencies, uh, they should try to get it started. I mean, this is, for me, it's a no brainer. Why, why wouldn't you tap into these resources and take advantage of it?